Good morning and welcome to the daily edition of the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I am Kurt. I am your host. Today is Friday, November the 6th of 2020. Uh, and I'm glad to have you aboard, whether you're joining from YouTube, from Rumble, or from the podcast. Welcome aboard. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit this morning about a subject that I have a blog post that I have yet to write and I'm working on at this moment called Counting Ballots. And it's talking about the current situation we have with people who uh, are with states that are currently counting ballots. But it's it's something that I think is more timely and something that I think needs to be discussed in a more general sense. And that's why I'm dealing with it this morning. Because as you know, I'm not prone to talk about specific events with the idea of just that event. I wanted to talk about a few things here this morning. I wanted to talk about the idea of uh, the fact that people are trying to allow for ballots that were mailed or uh, uh, done in person that were done after the election, and I and that I don't believe that's a correct thing, and that it's going to add to the problem with counting ballots. I wanted to talk about uh, transparency in the process, and what I wanted to say mostly with regard to that was that I think that uh, laws aside, what needs to happen is people need to be able to watch the process for them to be able to have confidence in it. And I don't care if you're putting boards up on the window or keeping observers from coming in or having uneven numbers of observers from one camp, one camp or another or making it so that people cannot see uh, what's going on in the counting process. None of these should be considered acceptable ways to do business, right? So that's an important thing. I believe any, pretty much anybody who obtains a permission to do so should be allowed to observe. Uh, I know that there are specific rules with regard to that, and I don't think that that's reasonable because I think that it should be possible for outsiders to any given party to do that. Um, are there circumstances where obs observation shouldn't be allowed? I'll be frank with you, I cannot come up with one. I cannot come up with a sing single instance where that's true. Um, now... There are people who would argue this year that things that we've had going on, um, like, for example, the COVID-19 crisis, uh, rightly affected elections. Look, guys, I'm going to say this very simply. You have had since May to get this process going. It is not reasonable for you to have not figured out ways, even if, even if it means that you had to talk to people about making it so that laws were changed to make it so that Counting could be done um, prior to when it would have been done in a normal year, uh, knowing full well that you're going to have a whole bunch of mail-in ballots. I could make the argument, and I'm going to make it, and then I'm going to sort of disqualify it, that a lot of the problems are happening in places where Democrats are in charge. But I'm going to disqualify that argument. I don't really care where it happens. It doesn't really matter. This needs to apply every bit as much to Republicans as it does to Democrats. It just seems like the Republicans have been doing a better job of dealing with this whole situation over the course of time. Um, okay, so I've already talked a little bit about the idea that, for example, mail-in ballots should not be allowed uh, past their date, and uh, past the election date. And I'm going to say that there needs to be, in my opinion, law on the books pretty much everywhere that holds the idea that Ballots A should be postmarked and that there should be B be extremely serious uh, consequences of post postmarking or pre postmarking a ballot. So moving a postmark date back to the third when the thing should have actually been postmarked on the fourth or after where it wouldn't have been a legitimate vote. OK, but but this is, you know, these are the sorts of considerations that in my mind should have long since been dealt with everywhere. But here's the funny thing, okay? Somebody pointed this out. I, I don't know if it's true. What they said was that Florida is the largest, third largest uh, uh, place in the country in terms of uh, number of people, voters, and so forth. And that's lovely and everything. Maybe it isn't, okay, fine. But the fact of the matter is it appears that they got everything done and on time. And you have to start asking yourself the question, why is that not true elsewhere? Why is that not true elsewhere? And I have to tell you that that's a major problem for me. And I don't know if it's unpreparedness of the people who were actually 
helping people to cast ballots. I don't know if it was unpreparedness on the part of the people who were casting ballots. I don't know if it's unpreparedness on the people, you know, not being prepared on the part of people counting ballots. But we definitely have problems, and this cannot, in my view, be allowed to happen ever again. Not just not to this extent. We need to get to the point whereby uh, certainly the next day, by the 4th, okay, and really by the night of the 3rd, we've basically done tallying ballots. And that means if we have mail-in ballots to deal with, or uh, absentee ballots to deal with, or whatever, all of that needs to be handled as quickly after the election is supposed to have closed out as possible. And the, vote, the counting of the votes should be occurring while balloting is still going on. I don't personally agree with the idea of reporting, and I certainly don't ag agree with the idea of polling or forecasting with regard to balloting. Look, You'll find out when you find out when you find out. Stop worrying about it in advance and let the people who are doing their jobs do their jobs. But for the people who are doing those jobs, they need to be doing them as quickly and as well as they possibly can. That's not questionable. That's not something that anybody should have a problem with. I don't care about COVID-19 coming into the picture. You should have figured out ways with as long as you had to work this out to decide how you were going to handle the fact that you had a virus, which I, I won't even get into how I feel about the virus particularly, except to say that I consider that we've made huge overreactions with regard to it. I don't believe the reactions that are currently occurring with regard to COVID-19 are reasonable, and that kind of burns me a little bit more over the fact that to this point we haven't completed the counts, and it's Friday, the... Uh, what, the 6th of November, it's literally three days after the election and we're still counting, okay? Now, I'm sure we're not still voting, and that's good because we shouldn't be by this point. We shouldn't have been voting past whatever the poll close date and time for each region or state happened to have been, whatever, however that all worked out. So we shouldn't, we sh definitely shouldn't be voting at this point. We really shouldn't be counting at this point. Counting should be done. This is, I don't care who it is, a function of mismanagement, particularly if multiple states have this occurring. And I don't care who's responsible. It needs to be dealt with. It needs to be dealt with properly. And if it's not, you need to know that what you're doing is malfeasance. You are responsible You are uh, for, you are guilty of malfeasance if this is how you manage uh, the tallying of elections right? It's totally unreasonable. It's totally improper. I want to take just a second to, and I'm not going to say who did it. Everybody knows by this point. Uh, I want to take just a second to talk about Arizona, who's still counting ballots, and yet was on the night that the election ran, was counted as being for one individual instead of the other. Now, I don't know. Maybe that's how things will work out. But neither did the people who did the counting. They didn't know. And this, too, is malfeasance, and it's on a slightly different, in a slightly different place. It's malfeasance on the part of the press, and I'm just going to tell you, if you did that, and you did not recant until you had a definite count, you can count on me never looking at you as a trustworthy or reliable source of information again. End of discussion. Okay? If you say, yes, we made a mistake, know that we're not calling that now. Then I go, well, okay, I get that. You made a mistake. People make mistakes. That's acceptable. That happens. We can't stop people from making mistakes now and again. But what you need to understand is that the, the, the wrap-up, the final takeaway from what I'm saying today is with all of these months, nine months or ten months or whatever it is, since, uh, since we knew about COVID-19, there should have been planning that would have made it possible for people to vote at a reasonable, in reasonable time, and there should have equally been planning to make it so that if it was even thought that a large number of ballots were going to be harder to count as a result of being mail-in or whatever, they should have been counted on election night, and at the very worst, the next day, that should have happened. That's how that should have been. I don't care who wins. I don't care who loses. Don't get me wrong. I do care who wins. And I do care who loses. And I'm afraid I'm not going to see a good result out of that, but that's 
as it is, and I'm not going to go riding the streets and burning things down or whatever. But I just want you to understand, whoever wins, whoever loses, the process should be something that inspires confidence. Okay, as I say, today is Friday, the 6th of November, 2020. Tomorrow will be no, uh, the no November the 7th, and it will be Saturday, and hopefully I'll get a chance to do another daily summation then. I hope that you're having a good day. I hope you continue to have a good day and that you have a great weekend, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow. The speaker on this edition of the Daily Summation is Kurt Schubert. This video was recorded Friday, November the 6th of 2020. The Daily Summation is created for Kurt's religion and politics. Thanks for checking out this video. Remember that you can like it on YouTube and you can give it a rumble on Rumble if you want to do that. Uh, I have channels on both YouTube and Rumble. They are the Kurtz Religion and Politics channels. You can subscribe to either one of those if you want to do so. Remember, if you subscribe on YouTube, you probably want to click the notification bell in order to be notified of new content. Um, if you want to see more from me, you can check me out on my blog. That's blogs.kpshubert.com, blogs.kpshubert.com. You can also see my Facebook page, that is uh, Kurt's Religion and Politics on Facebook. You can check out my Twitter, Twitter, uh, Parlor, and Minds.com accounts. My handle on all three of those is at KP Schubert. That's at K-P-S-H-U-B-E-R-T. You can um, check out my podcast. The podcast is at podcasts.kpshubert.com. That's podcasts.kpshubert.com. And finally, you can check me out on Patreon. And if you want to support me, that's probably one of the better places that you can do that. I am Kurt's Religion and Politics there. Thanks again for checking out this video, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow.